can be together and study God's Word. Thank you so much, Coral, for that beautiful song, He Speaks. And uh, that's a beautiful song. And we hope that when He speaks to our hearts, we can always say, Here I am, Lord. Use me. Amen. Every time the choral sings, I always desire, or I always hope that I'm present at the church every time you sing. So thank you so much. You touch my lives with, with my li life as you blend together in that beautiful music. Now, we have been studying God's Word in the past few Sabbaths, and we trace up the lives of the different disciples. And by the way, I would like to thank our guests who have come and visited us today. We praise God for you coming to join and fellowship with us. And our study today is a continuation of a series of the studies of the apostles or the disciples that Jesus has started. One of the three disciples that is considered as the member of the inner circle, a group of three that is very close to Jesus Christ, are the following, Peter, James, and John. We have studied about Peter, we have studied about James, and we studied today John. Now, John was the only one who recorded the words of Jesus Christ that is in John chapter 3, verse 16. What does the Bible say in John chapter 3, verse 16? It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, let me reiterate. We are not studying the disciples just to know the, the resume or the autobiography of these disciples. We are studying these disciples so that we will know more of Jesus Christ and how He treated them and how He made their lives change and transform. And from that way, we will be able to know the meaning of Jesus Christ and how He will be able to transform our lives. Amen? As for the other disciples and also to John, they can just look back to Jesus Christ who was the source of their inspiration and the only one who have changed their lives. When you are upgrading your life, someone must have been inspiring you. If your life is going downhill, someone might be the cause Probably a circumstance, if not a person, whether going up or going down, somebody could be a cause, or you yourself could be the reason behind. Someone must be given credit or discredit. There was a guy who have said to his friend, my wife made me a millionaire. And so the guy said, wow, she must be a wonderful woman, of course. I want you to meet my wife. And while they were on the way to meet the wife, the guy said, by the way, what were you before you meet this woman? And he said, I was a multimillionaire. She was the one responsible from a multimillionaire becoming a millionaire. The wife was the cause. Now, it is just a story to help us understand that behind something, someone is there, either bringing you up or bringing you down. And we praise the Lord for our wives here. They bring us up and encourage us, not that kind of wife. Now, John could trace back what he is and what he was and how he was changed by the love of Jesus Christ. Now, look at Matthew chapter 17. I'm going to... Uh, pinpoint one of the important things that have been attended by this person, John. Please open with me. We don't have a PowerPoint today for this study. Matthew chapter 17. It says here, After six days, Jesus took with him who? Peter, James, and John. Three individuals, three disciples. And these three disciples are who we call the members of the inner circle. Others may be outside, may be out of the picture, but these three normally were accompanying Jesus and were invited by Jesus in many instances at the exclusion of the other disciples. 
So after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, the face of Jesus, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to, Mo to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. This is another instance when Jesus Christ received these words from the Father. One instance was during his baptism. The next instance was during his transfiguration when the Father said, This is my Son, whom I love with him. I am well pleased. Listen to him. Peter, James, and John. Now you will notice at the very beginning when it says, Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Now, John's name can hardly stand by himself. In fact, as you look at the Gospels, you will, find, you will always find that his name, John, is always connected with Jesus, is always connected with Peter or James. There was only one occasion that it stood by himself, an occasion where he criticized one who is doing a miracle because although he was not part of the disciples, that was the only mention in the Old in the New Testament about his himself being one mention. Now, another thing why he is mentioned with James, because they are brothers. James was the older brother, John was the younger brother. As I, were, I was reading the Desire of Ages, it mentioned that John was the younger, was younger than the rest of the disciples. It is not saying one of the younger ones. It was younger than the rest of the disciples. In other words, he, he could be the youngest of the disciples. James' his brother died sometime in the year 44. And of all the disciples, it was John who led to old age. So John has experienced some suffering, some heartaches, when he learned about the brother's brother's death, James, who was beheaded. Another disciple died as a martyr, another suffering for him. And all the rest of the disciples, except himself who was surviving, was causing him suffering. You will find out that just like as we have studied last week, James, the brother of John, both of them were called by Jesus Christ as sons of thunder. When they were called sons of thunder, they were the people who will say, how I wish you will be like this. It was not only James who will be cursing people, who will be going against them. John as well was with him. So probably you will have to forget that caricature that brings us a picture that John was a mild person a pale person and so loving because at the very beginning he was just like other with the other disciples who were fishermen rugged rough edge and that was who he was in fact as he was one of the brothers james and john they were siblings and the mother who brought james also brought john who went to jesus christ jesus christ could you place one of my sons in your right and the other son on your left? The other son that was referred was our study last week. It was James. And the one that we will be studying today, who his mother was interested to be on the other side of Jesus when he established his kingdom was John. And they too were part of the debate, who will be the greatest in the kingdom of God? Now, what was that? It pictured John as one who was ambitious. And you will find out that he was a black and white preacher. He is not referred as a black and white preacher because he is addressing to those that are colored in skin. He was a black and white preacher because he addresses directly what he thought is right and wrong. 
And so you will finally find in the Holy Scriptures, particularly in the book of John and his epistles, 1 John, 2 John, and the 3rd John, and the book of Revelation, which he also wrote, you will find out, especially in the gospel, you will see there the contrasting words that he was preaching and he was writing. He always spoke of the light against darkness. He spoke about the kingdom of God against the kingdom of the devil. He spoke about the children of God against the children of the devil. He spoke about the judgment of the, of the righteous against the uh, judgment of the, uh, the wicked. He spoke about the, the resurrection of the righteous against the resurrection of the wicked. He spoke about the fruits of the righteous and the fruitlessness of the wicked. He spoke about love and hate. He was saying, if you are not with God, you are with the devil. And so one of the writers that I have been reading about the apostles and the disciples, his name is John MacArthur, and he wrote the 12 ordinary men. He said in his book, if I have heavy doses from the book of John, I resorted to go back to the book of Paul, especially in Romans chapter 6 and 7, because in chapter 6 and 7, he found hope. As he said, when I look at the book and read the book of John, it fills me that there is, there is a way, that it, there is an easy way to go to Jesus, but if you fail with one error, you fall into the pit. But when I read the Apostle Paul, it helps me understand who I was and the struggle of sin after I accepted Jesus Christ. But Paul and John were all used by Jesus Christ. When he wrote, John, you will find out that he wrote not just about hatred and love, but he wrote something that has been an effect of the penetration of the love of Jesus Christ. Look at his character as he was mentioned in the Holy Scriptures as to who he was. Reading from Desire of Ages, page 295, it says, John, who came into closest association with the meek and lowly one, referring to Jesus, was not himself naturally meek and yielding. He and his brother were called the sons of thunder while they were with Jesus, and his light shone to him aroused their indignation and combativeness. It mentions here, evil temper, revenge, the spirit of criticism were all in the beloved disciple. He was proud and ambitious to be first in the kingdom of God. Ambitious, proud, the spirit of criticism was in him. It reminds me of the story of President Abraham Lincoln. His life was challenged by a criticism by Edwin Stanton. Edwin Stanton called him a clown. And he denounced his public policies. All criticisms that can be poured was given by Edwin Stanton against Abraham Lincoln. And another thing, he called him the original gorilla because of the form of his face. And he even mentioned to one explorer, he said, he is a fool. This explorer is a fool because why is it that he has to go to Africa to look for a gorilla when he can find it in Springfield, Illinois, the home place of Abraham Lincoln? Too much sacriticism. Abraham Lincoln did not respond to anything. He was silent. And the next opportunity came to Abraham Lincoln. He appointed Edwin Stanton as the Minister of War. At a time when Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in the theater, his body lay down, and Edwin Stanton was there, just pouring his tears, looking at the man who has never said anything against him, after he criticized. Now, to start with, John was not like that. Abraham Lincoln was better than John. You can just say anything and then immediately he will be combative. He will explode. According to the records, he was an explosive preacher, explosive writer. 
when any one of us, uh, I have seen many pastors here uh, who are retirees and my fellow ministers who are still active in the work by AIDS. Now, you may remember when you were young, and of course, uh, I was also young, that we were on fire. And then we were on fire, we were ready to combat anything, tell the truth, regardless of what the effect to the congregation will be, will be. We have to do and proclaim the truth. And then as we grow, we tend to mellow. Because as we mingle with the brethren, we start to sympathize their feelings, their heartaches, the patience that is required in the struggle of sin. And then we tend to give the love that they need. John happened to be like that. But he was not looking at the congregation that changed him. According to the records, Desire of Ages, page 295, day by day, in contrast with his own violent spirit, he beheld the tenderness and forbearance of Jesus and heard his lessons of humility and patience. He opened his heart to the divine influence and became not only a hearer, but a doer of the Savior's words. Self was hid in Christ. He learned to wear the yoke of Christ and to bear his burden. Christ changed him. If we have never been changed, we only have to go to Christ and he will change us as he did to John. When John was young, he was combative, he was ambitious. He was impetuous, rash in action, rash in words. But then as he looked at the example of Jesus Christ, he became a better person. He was changed as he looked at the forbearance of Jesus, the patience of Jesus. When he and his brother James said to Jesus, after the, the Samaritans were hostile to them, Jesus, why don't we let fire fall from heaven? But Jesus said, no, no. I come not to destroy, I come to save. And James and John were present. John was one of those who have seen the quality of love in Jesus Christ. And then he was day by day changed by the love of Jesus. Who was responsible for the change of John? Jesus Christ. If we ever needed a change, if we ever need someone to shape our future, there is no other one but Jesus Christ. You and I can only be changed by Jesus. There is no hope that you can find in me because I am also looking for Jesus. You look at, the Je you look at Jesus, look up to him. Because our source of power, our source of energy, our source of inspiration, even the source of forgiveness is only him, not any one of us here. John was transformed by the love of Jesus Christ. In the Holy Scriptures, as you look at the writings here, and look at how he spoke about the truth. There were about 40 times that he spoke about the truth. Truth, truth, truth. But as he was molded by the life and the example of Jesus Christ and the power of Jesus working in him through the Holy Spirit, you will find out he has more than 85 mention of love, more than twice the mention of truth. He became the apostle of love, and he was called the theologian of love. That's the topic that we have today. Because if you look at the scriptures, he is filled with love, love, love after being combative. Have you ever recognized who those people were when Jesus Christ was resurrected who went to visit his tomb? Very interesting. Mary was there. Look at the records. It is recorded in the book of John, chapter 19. Please go with me to the book of John. Very interesting record in the Holy Scriptures. Oh, not 20. Chapter 20 of the book of John mentioned about Mary Magdalene, verse 1. Still dark went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. Who was this disciple, the one whom Jesus loved? John. This John. And so the record said, 
Simon Peter and John, the one Jesus loved, said, They have taken the Lord out of that tomb. That's what Mary said. And we don't know where they have put him. Verse 3 is a very interesting thing as far as Peter and John are concerned. And as we look at this record, it says, So Peter and the other disciples started for that tomb. Both were running. Were they just leisurely walking and say, Okay, let's go to that tomb and let's say whether Jesus is still there. Were they leisurely walking? What did we re read? They were running. Peter and John were running, rushing to the tomb. And both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter. You can just find out Peter must be ahead. And then while running, while, while Peter was running, the other disciple who ran with him outran, passed by Peter. And that guy was the, the disciple that Jesus loved, John. He was so excited to see Jesus Christ. If you will see in that record, did you notice that John has been changed a lot. You will find out in this story that John was mentioned and described as a disciple whom Jesus loved. You will never find the book of John that he referred to himself. I, John, wrote the book of John. Or John was with Jesus. He mentioned John and the disciple whom Jesus loved. He never mentioned about himself. He never talked about himself. He always talked with Jesus and he referred himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. He could hardly put his name in the book of John because all his ultimate intention was only to glorify God, the one who have changed his life. For us also, there is no other one that we can glorify except God that we can just honor, not ourselves. Let us just honor God. It is very interesting, but uh, they have the right. If you look at this, this recorded, uh, this, this music, said some, one, one, one songwriter said, and he sang also the song that he wrote. He said, this is a gift from God, but anyone who will copy this will be, will be penalized by law. <laughs> <laughs> gift from God, but anyone who will copy this will be penalized by law severely. Now, those are also, uh, those are also grants that the law provides for those who have special talents. But John in his writing said, I am the disciple whom Jesus loved. He did not mention even in the book of John, he did not mention that he was the one referred as the disciple whom Jesus loved. He simply mentioned him like a third person of himself because he knew that there is nothing in him that should be honored. It is always the master who have shaped his life for the future. As you look at his reaction, Jesus reproved his disciples. He warned and cautioned them. But John and his brethren did not leave him. They chose Jesus. Very important thing. When Jesus reproved them, John did not leave him. And the rest of the disciples, they stick to Jesus Christ. The Savior loved them all, but John was the most receptive spirit. He was younger than the, the, than the others, and so he has just like a child's can finding trust, he opened his heart to Jesus. Before, he was not only proud, he was not only self-assertive and ambitious for honor, he was resentful under injury. And so many trials that he had, you will find out, brethren, that he was not resentful and he was not complaining. Many of us in little things can easily complain. Have you ever complained this week of anything? Complain against this, that? There was one employee who complained to the payroll department, said, my salary this week is lacking. 
with $50. And so the payroll department explained, well, sir, last week we found out that we have overpaid you with $50. And he said, I can understand the kind of work you are doing, especially that you are committing two errors in a row. You committed an error last week, and now you created an error this week. And he was angry because two errors were committed. Unless, just like what John was defined, or how he was referred, John by nature was not good in himself. You by nature, me by nature, is not good by myself. It is not natural for us to be good, to be kind, to be patient. It is only by the power of God that we can be transformed. And when we are transformed, there is nothing to brag. But then just like John, forgetting himself, what we'll just say, I am the guy who was forgiven, the guy who was loved by Jesus. In our study today, you will find out so many things that happen in the life of John. Look at John, uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. Reading from the, the text, it says, I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the isle, island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I mentioned here was on the Isle of Patmos. There are so many reliable church historians who have said that during the time or the reign of Emperor Domitian of Rome, the brother of Emperor Titus, who was the one who destroyed Jerusalem sometime in the year AD 70, was the one who caused a great persecution. The persecution was developed, and at time, according to historians, John was pastoring the church in Ephesus. And while he was pastoring there, when persecution developed, he was captured. And traditional history said that he was placed in a cauldron with boiling oil, but he remained unharmed and scathed. And so because of that, he was exiled to Patmos. Patmos is a small island, one of the Dodecanese islands off the west coast of the modern Turkey. He was exiled there. There was a cave that he could come in. It was in, I was thinking before that John was living alone in the island of Patmos. But Acts of the Apostles mentioned that there were people there and it was not sad for him because he had people to make friends with. In Acts of the Apostles, I forgot the page, it mentioned that he made friends and also made converts out of those people there. People thought that he can be silenced by putting him into exile at the island of Patmos. But then he was able to speak still the love of God. Like Apostle Paul, the love of God constrained him to tell about Jesus Christ. If we are enveloped by the love of Jesus Christ, we cannot hold ourselves but to speak about not only the truth, but the love of Jesus Christ. Because that's the one that has transformed him. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, he mentioned about suffering, but seldom, seldom did he mention the word suffering. In fact, this word suffering, as he mentioned, he said, in the suffering, I'm a brother and companion in the suffering. Just to help us understand, if you suffer, brother, if you suffer, sister, I also suffered long time ago. But then he continued, and patient endurance. He knew that there is endurance that can be ours in Jesus Christ. He was not afraid even during the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He was not afraid. Look at the records in the Holy Scriptures. Uh, join with me to uh, John chapter probably 17 or 18. You will find out about John who was not afraid during the investigation of Jesus. 
the record in John chapter 18, verse 15. Simon Peter and another disciple, and this another disciple is mentioned here as, again, the, the disciple that Jesus loved, were following Jesus. They were following when Jesus was arrested and was brought to the Sanhedrin for the investigation. And the record says, because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside the door. And the other disciple who was known to the high priest came back, spoke to the girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. John has an access to the courtyard, to the court itself. He was known and he was respected. Other disciples who fled are nowhere to be found and are not mentioned here. You will find out the, 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 the strength that he has, the courage that he has, because even though Jesus was there, and he could probably be the next because at one point when Jesus Christ, can you drink the cup? He said, we can. And it was referring to the cup of suffering. He remembered that probably he could be the next one right there because he said he can drink the cup of suffering with Jesus. But while he was there, he saw the suffering of Jesus Christ. And most probably as the Holy Scriptures will tell us, tracing the next events, it could only be John who was there close to Jesus Christ. He was probably the only disciple who saw Jesus Christ being pierced by a spear in his side. He was the only disciple very close to Jesus there in the vicinity when nails were pierced into his hands. It was only he when Jesus Christ, Father, Forgive them, for they do not know. He who heard him saying that because he was so close to Jesus Christ, he was even willing to die. He was not afraid. He was close to Jesus Christ. And finally, Jesus Christ saw the disciple whom he loved as he referred himself, looking at his mother, a mother who was having pain in his heart, looking at his son dying. He said, woman, Woman, look at your son. And he endorsed his mother to John. And John accepted. Ellen G. White referred the mother as a precious legacy. Sister White mentioned it as a precious virtue, a gift. Because according to the records, John had a special blessing taking the mother with him to his house because he always see his mother who reminds him of Jesus Christ who loved him. Church historians said, and eyewitnesses have been quoted by these church historians, in the entire life of John, he never left Jerusalem, just so he could be with Mary to take care of Mary. To Peter, Jesus said, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. To John, said, he said, care for my mother, care for my mother. A good reminder is for, for the children to respect parents. In our study today, John is not something that we can copy. But there is someone whom he copied and who provided him a fulfillment of a new spirit, a new mind, and a new heart. And that is Jesus. And may all of us will look where we are having difficulty in our faith, when we are struggling in our daily lives, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Whatever Jesus has done to John, converting him from who he was when he was young and changing him when he was old, is the same person, the same Savior who can change you and me. Many of us might have grown old. Whatever our age is, we may have still the character like John when he was young. 
old age, but the character like John when he was young. But we can be mature if Jesus Christ is allowed to hold our hands. And in Him, we grow in Him. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, thank you so much, Lord, for the experiences of the apostles, the disciples whom you have changed. You are so patient with them that even though they were erroneous, they were not perfect, but you worked through them in their hearts. And so, Lord, we allow you to work in our hearts. We open our hearts for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit so that we can be changed day by day. We can behold your mercy, your grace, your patience, and your forbearance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.